Good afternoon. How is everyone? It's lovely to see you again on a Tuesday. And today we have got a lovely spot of sunshine here in the UK. This morning was all a bit grey and there was even a little bit of snow on top of the Malvern Hills, um, which is pretty and uh, doesn't affect day to day life and it's on top of the hill. But uh, I think quite a few places in the UK, certainly up Scotland, have got uh, quite a bit of snow in some places. So the pictures are lovely and pretty. But, uh, we might well get some tomorrow. I don't know about where whereabouts you all are, uh, what your weather's doing at the moment. But uh, hopefully you've got some bit of sunshine as well. And although it's only about four or five degrees outside in the garden, it looks nice. Uh, the birds are certainly making the most of it on the feeders this morning. So I've been keeping them topped up. And uh, what else has been going on? Uh, well, just coming up with some nice scrummy bead ideas and making some bits and pieces. We've been a bit pretty cats all around. I've got one here. You might come and say hello. Do you want to say hello to me? Well, no? Okay. So Spiri is a little black cat. She was a rescue cat um, about eight or nine years ago now. We reckon they were about four years old when we got them. Um, she and her sister rescued together. Uh, the, Spirit, well, Spirit is her proper name, a little black cat with a little tiny bit of white fluff here or there. Her sister is like a, a tortoise shell, so I should definitely have to put some pictures up because trying to get them on camera might be a bit difficult unless I'm not planning it. Um, so what else is going on? Um, I do have two other cats as well, also rescue cats, and that was a mum and a young kitten. Um, mum is called Sherry and the little cat's called Jack Daniels or JD for short. Um, you can tell we have a bit of a drink theme going on. So they're all alcoholic now, but when the uh, my children were younger, we went for all like the, the Pepsi and the Tango and all that kind of thing to keep it, you know, very nice for them. So what have you guys all been up to? We've got a few hellos all coming in already. But, uh, let's have a look, see what have we got. Carol Clark says hi all. Marlena says hello. Mandy, good morning, everybody. Irina. Hi or oh, hi Joe from Ireland of Bermuda, Croatia. Oh, that sounds nice. Oh, there's some beautiful coastlines. I think I've seen pictures. Um, one of the polymer clay ladies that I've met at a workshop a few years ago now, she was from Croatia and she showed some beautiful, beautiful pictures of coastlines there. Um, never been myself. I've not traveled a huge amount. Uh, maybe something for the future. Teresa says, Good uh, you, Stephanie's hello everybody. Mandy's good morning from Australia. Good morning. Peggy, what time is it there? Uh we've got a hello from I'm gonna say this wrong, but I'll give it a go. Mary Tamarina. Hopefully that's somewhere close. Sorry if I'm really, really long way out. Uh hello, lovely sunny in Liverpool. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Trish, good afternoon. Oh, it's a chilly day here in Ireland. Oh, chilly. Have you got any snow in Ireland, Trish? I wonder. Um, or maybe, well, I think some of us are due to get some tomorrow, maybe Thursday. Let's we'll see. Uh, Teresa, hi from Hamilton in Canada. Good morning from Florida. Okay, we're all over the place today, aren't we? It's lovely to see you all. Have a woohoo quarter live drizzly here in the morning and the hill count country of texas oh well cool what a place oh. how else we got we got ellen good morning from texas a couple of you there brilliant it's so nice that people can tune in this is the thing with all these new lives and things we could actually have lovely little communities and lovely people and we all share a passion for different you know the same hobby in this case but we all have different hobbies as well uh mrs poison ivy greetings from california uh deb i lost my rescue cat on christmas day oh i'm so sorry deb he was 17 was the most loving cat i'd ever had a little dog and i miss him terribly oh it, they, they do leave a big hole when they, they um they part company but just remember you've given them the best life they could have had and uh, that's what's important they don't live all that long i've seen that i've had two cats now they were both rescues and they lived to 21 and 22 um and sometimes they don't get that old but you make the most of them 
Uh, Sue, hello from Plymouth and Devon, our oh, beautiful part of the world. I love it down that way. Mandy says it's 2.30 in Australia, Melbourne. Wow. Crikey, 2.30 in the morning. What are you doing up? I'd be totally kept out at that time. Dreaming about beads, of course, but fast asleep. Mandy says, I've got one cat and he's 19. Oh, bless. Lovely. Oh, I do like the cats. Uh, Mandy's, oh, sorry, two o'clock in the morning. Gosh, it's still early, still early. Linda's is hi, oh, and we've got Linda's also saying hi, sis. Oh, which one? Okay, Mandy. Oh, I'm losing track here. They're bouncing around all over these places, these messages. Hi, everyone from Anvil, Pennsylvania. That's from Nancy. And we go, oh, hi, Matthew. Hi, Matthew, if you're watching. And Jermaine, you'll be there somewhere and watching away. Good afternoon to you. And Mandy's, I am actually beading at the moment. Brilliant, brilliant. Anyone else out there watching lives and beading along at the same time? Um, you know, my eyes are watering. I'm getting all, all caught up with the emotion of seeing you all there and trying to come up and comment on everybody. So today... Let's uh, make a start on what we've got to show you today. So this was a, a bit of an idea. And if I just take you down to the camera for a second and I can show you this little necklace. Now, this is a little necklace. Um, I put had some beads from Bead Spider and was like, well, what can we do with these? So I come up with this simple idea and then we thought we'd have a play with it. Obviously, when we're coming up with ideas, we've got to be a bit careful on the quantity of beads that may be available. And sometimes when you're building a kit, you don't have masses and masses of particular colors of beads and things. So I do get a bit carried away with some of my designs and, and then they have to be scaled back a little bit occasionally. Not always, not always. But you can imagine Bead Spider has a vast vault of beads. I've been there and it's wonderful. There's beads everywhere. It's what you dream of. And so, that was one idea. Now, you would have seen on the, the advert for today's going live show in the Facebook picture, a lovely blue version. And that's the same idea, just scaled it back with two of the colours instead of my one, which was three colours. And we've also gone with some beautiful, beautiful black findings as well, which uh, they're usually around. We don't use them very often. Um, but they do set the jewellery off very differently from your normal golds and silvers that we use. OK, so these beads today, they're a very they've got a lovely feel to them. They're called a satin solaris um, and they're in ovals and lentil shapes today. But they've got an absolutely beautiful feel to them, like like satin, like the material, um, quite soft to hold. It's quite different from most of the other beads that we get to work with. Um, so we incorporated those with along with some glass pearls. Uh, these are six, six mil in size. Uh, we've got some crystal sparkle and they are um, two mil round faceted as well. So the sparkle for them is absolutely gorgeous. We've got a crystal round ball bead, which is like the ones you might see on the Shambella style um, bracelets and necklaces. And again, they come in lots of different colours and we've tweaked the bundles for you. There's four bundles available today, so you've got a good choice. Um, hand on heart, I'd probably buy your four because the deal on it is really, really good. So they're $12.50 for each bundle and you get a selection of the, let's say, the faceted crystals, the glass pearls, the O4 Solaris beads and the lentils. You get a bundle pack for the findings you're going to get the head pins and jump rings clasps and some tiger tail as well which we'll be using today so that's in the bundles there's the four different colorways which we'll come to later when we have a little peek at the website so we know we'd love doing that bit and seeing what's on there and there'll be some other products that have been added that you might consider as a, a really useful add-on to help your project go a lot further I say you could really mix up the colours by having more than one bundle. And if you do go for the four, it's 20% off and it will be £40 for the four. Brilliant price. You're getting an awful lot for your money on this. Um, I say they're lovely and they're a bit different to work with. So here um, we have a look at this again and I'll just talk you through it and see if there's any other little comments just coming in before we get, get going with our demo. And 
we've got uh, Romania's coming in. We've got two o'clock in one. Yeah, yeah. See, that's everyone but Hansville, Pennsylvania. And I think we've got most of the comments here making a wire tree. Oh, wow, Irina. You're going to have to pop a picture of that on Facebook. I'd love to see that. Nancy's saying pretty beads. And Teresa says it's beautiful. Thank you ever so much. Um, so, yeah, so this this idea then. So this is the crystal sparkle bead. See, the just catches the light as it's, it swivels round. On this version, I've used the tiger patel coming down through the necklace itself. It comes down through the crystal bead. And on this particular version, say this is the original idea. I've used the toggle clasp. And the toggle towel joins on that toggle class. We won't be doing that today because we haven't got the toggle in the in the kit. But this toggle was an orphan. I can't find the other part of it. I don't know what I've done with it. I don't think I've used it in another project, but I could have done. So occasionally when you do get a toggle class, but it's only one part, you can use it for other projects. Um, they'd also make nice earrings as well because you can hang them off the earring finder and have lots of beads coming down from it like a cascade. And then here we go for these oval shapes. You see the satin the sheen that comes off of these is really, it's just so delicate and gorgeous. And then we've used jump rings in a way to form our, our waterfall, our cascade. And we've added the crystals. And they're just beautiful. So that's one way of using it. And I've done different different lines on the beadwork varying. So I was using three colours on this way, which is why I say about um, you might want to go for the more than one bundle on this case. You can mix your colours. It'll be absolutely beautiful. All righty. So for today's uh, little project, I have got a different colour way to play with. So I'll pop that to one side for a minute. Today I have... These are the pearls, gorgeous. I'm going to say ivory, but they're also quite buttery, like buttercream consistency colour. You know, you've got that nice Victoria sponge cake on the go. And these are the crystals. And you can see if we try and catch them in the light. They got a beautiful, although they look gold, bronzy gold to start with. You can see as they catch the light, there's some pinks and some purples going on. So I think they're absolutely gorgeous and they're two mil. You can use them in so many different projects and you're going to have plenty left over when you play with this project as well. Um, so they could certainly go into a lot of different things. So those are those. And I don't know if you've uh, spotted my... Uh, earrings let's see if we can actually see them if not i'll take them out um here we go. so yeah it's not gonna be easy to see is it does that work how's that work can you see they are on this occasion they're little hematite but they are faceted two mils and they are um let's switch back to the camera here Okay, so when we say about having lots and lots of these little crystals left over from this project, this is a possible idea. It's just using very simple little rosary links between each little seed bead, a stopper one at the bottom. And I wear these earrings, you know, I wear them all the time. They're my go-to. If I go anywhere, they go in the bag with me. And they're just nice and simple because they're silver. They go with everything. But I keep meaning to make myself some nice goldy colours because... Sometimes the outfit just calls from some gold in life. Um, with the other beads, so we here we go. We've got the the oval shape on this satin solaris, and this is kind of um, I think it's coming up I think like skin color actually on here, like a soft soft peach. I'm going to say actually looking at them on my without the camera view, they're more of a dusky peachy pink you know i'm a very soft rose color then we have some lentil beads that will go with them look at these are lovely what a lovely shape to work with i'm so used to working in rounds it's nice to work with some different colors so these are more sort of uh like the buttercream if i bring the pearls on you can sort of 
see those together. Um, so they, they're like an off, off white creamy color. Um, so it's a real soft, quite sort of the English countryside kind of, if you can know, like the flowers and the big borders of the big gardens. Um, so yeah, but I mean, these little crystals, they are absolutely, ah, that's my favorite bit, definitely. Black findings. So we're saying we don't, they're available. They're on the website all the time. Um, we don't work with them very often. We tend to just think, oh, silver and gold. So that's the findings. We've also got some jump rings to use. Okay, and we've also got the lobster clasp that's coming in the kit as well. You get two of them in the set. Okay, so that's it in your bundles today. Let's just say the, the colourway for this one was the pink champagne, which I think was absolutely brilliant. Um, we got a purple passion, which we'll see later on the website. Absolutely lovely. Um, also, we're going to have a blue lagoon, which is more the version that you've seen on the website advert and the Facebook advert, and the silver shadow, which is going to be the sort of silvers and greys. Very beautiful. Um, tiger tail, when you get yours, as I've said previously, if you've watched before, I always keep mine in a plastic bag. If it's a big reel, bigger bag, that's all. But then I keep one of the thread that I'm using coming out the bag and just grip it up to the end so you can always pull your thread out. Okay, so how about we make a start? We're going to use um, an average sort of size necklace for me. I would have about 20 centimetres on each side. So it's about 40 centimetres. I think it roughly works out about 16 inches. That tends to be a go-to for my length of necklace. And so I'm going to pull out about a little bit more than that because you don't want to come short. It gives you a bit of freedom then. You want it a bit longer when you actually start making it. That's great. So here we go. We'll just cut off the length of this. Um, and different ways of threading this necklace so we'll just talk through some ideas so on the on the one I created say I used a toggle clasp but I'd used the tiger towel gone through round the toggle clasp and back up through this crystal ball it was like the junction of the necklace so you get a nice V shape um, I think the blue version it's the they've used the crystal ball and a head pin, but use the head pin as a piece of wire effectively. So we've top, top, top here. We've gone through the ball. We've done a wrap loop either side. And then we've taken that through the tiger tail and attached it that way. So there's various options. And you could take both your lengths of tiger tail, come down and form a loop. Okay, pop your jump ring on at this point for your cascade beads to come this way, and then your necklace would come off the V shape here. Okay, so there's different ways of doing it. Um, they will hang pretty much the same way once you've finished, and it just depends how you like it. The option of doing it with the head pin, um, if we just Pop that on now. So I'm going to just take off the head, the top, the little head pin, okay, in my flush cutter. Cover the top because it will ping off at quite a rate. It's quite a strong, strong metal with the head pins. Um, so when those bits of wire fly off, they really do go quite quickly. So if I was forming just a loop, take my round nose pliers. Pull that round. Sorry, out of camera. Okay, and then you get this little shape here. And then I'm just going to reposition and pull that back round. Okay, so we end up with this nice little neat shape here. Okay, and I'm looking for that 
drawing to be as close as possible so you don't get a escape route for your tiger tail. So if you take both the pliers and just give it a little squidge in, I don't want to just deform the shape of the loop we've created, but I don't want there to be a gap, a visible gap where that touches the main part. Okay. Then we got our crystal bead ball. We pop that on. Look how sparkly that is. That's awesome. Awesome. That's a word my children use. <laughs> okay. And then on this one, I'm just going to hold on to this loop because I want the loops to be facing the same way. So just hold, give it a little bend. I could do a wrap loop here. Um, today, I'd make a change. We'll just go for a, a standard loop. So I'm going to leave about, it's about a centimetre of wire here. And then cut again, just hold on to that loose bit. Pop it over there. I've got a little pop to the one side for all my little bits and pieces. Grab the round nose pliers again. Hold on to the end of the wire there. Okay, and I'm using about the same space along my round nose pliers to try and keep it fairly consistent and then just roll. Okay. And then what you can do just to be confident that your loop is all there and all joined. And if it's not quite straight, you can just hold one and give it a little squish along. Okay. So that's the first part, not lovely. Imagine that just on a little chain of an earring finding. The most sparkly dangly earring going. Little disco ball. I say these come in lots of different colours. There should be uh, on the website, you'd be able to go shopping for some different colours. You could have a whole string of them as a big long earring. That'd be lovely too, wouldn't it? Okay, so that's our first component. And say so as far as the necklace bit, We'll come back to the necklace in a moment. I want to go through making the waterfall cascadey part now. Okay, so here we're going to use the some more of the head pins. Let's pop her out of the way for a moment. And we are going to have leave the head pin, the end on the head pin this time. We're going to pick up a little crystal, not that one. That one's got other plans for the day. Pop on one crystal and pick up one of your oval shapes. Okay. Pick up a second crystal. And obviously, this is entirely up to you. You could actually, if you wanted to change the design a bit and have longer tassels, you could, you know, let's just have a play. You could pop a pearl on at this point as well. And that would actually make a nice earring. Just very simple, just turn a loop here, pop your earring finding on. There we go. See, that's pretty. So for the moment, we'll come back to that idea. I'm going to turn a little loop on the top of this. So I'm just popping my thumbnail in that place, bending the wire across, and I want to make sure the crystal's the right side of that bend. Again, I'm going to take my flush cutters, about a centimetre, stop the end pinging off. Round those pliers. Again, just imagine your, your favourite position on the pliers to get roughly the same shape each time. Um, you can mark your pliers, get a little um, permanent marker and just drop a line on there. So you get roughly pretty well accurately then each time you do a loop. Your loop should be about the same size because you mark on the pliers, just a little dot, permanent marker pen, and then you know each time you're going to the same place. So we're going to repeat that. So another head pin, another crystal. Um, you know, this is only a two mil crystal. Okay, these head pins are quite sizable, but you can see that's gone on there. 
really nicely. I'm just trying to see if you can see the hole still. It's not very easy with the black head pin, actually. But there is, you know, it's it's got wiggle room. So it's not stretching the bead to breaking point. Um, I'm sure we've all done that before. You force the bead on something, it's just a bit too tight, and it's especially with glass beads. And whichever way you find easiest to pick your crystals up, pop them on the surface, pop them in your beading mat's probably the best way. Stop them bouncing around. And again, I've got the crystal, the oval, and another crystal. Pop my thumbnail in, bend it over. And then we'll get the flush cutters again, about the centimetre. Cut that off. Rail nose pliers. And form that loop. Okay, and if you take your flat nose pliers, just to make sure it has completed that loop, if you're not 100%, just get in there. We want a nice, a nice loop. So that's two, and I'm going to do um, a couple of the lentil beads as well. Um, so I'm going to pop on the crystal again. Obviously, you can, you know rearrange these shapes as much as you like. I'm actually going to pop a pearl on this one and a crystal. Okay, pop it on, see if we like it. Again, another nice little uh, earring there, very simple. Match the necklace beautifully. Pop a bend. Cutters. In we go. What, ooh, what do you think of the nail varnish today? It's rather nice, isn't it? It's quite dark, very purple, which is beautiful. It's probably very easy to scratch as well, so I'm being careful. Okay, and you just see my little crystals just tried to ride up there. And what I'm going to do is just pop my round those pliers in again. And I'm just making sure my loop goes above that crystal okay again i'm just going to give it a little squidge okay so that loop is actually a little bit on the oval side but not too bad it's, it's okay um, i'm just going to get it Straight because when you want to look up that way, you want it straight as well. You don't want it to be off at a funny angle. Okay, so what should we do? Should we have? Um, I tend to work in odd numbers um, when I do drops and things. So at this point, I'm either going to go for three of the oval shapes and two of the lentil shapes, or we could go three lentil and two oval. People saying about beads, cool beads. Yeah, they are. They are brilliant beads. So we could do something different on this one. Um, but I will match the last one I've done. So I'm going to pop the pearl on, and I'm going to just pop that crystal on the top there. So that's the same. So you can see we're just building up a little stash. Curl that one over. Again, about a centimetre. Cut off the extra. Round those pliers. And curl it round the plier. I did actually remember to make a cup of coffee today, so I'll have to drink some in a minute before it's cold. Have you got cups of coffee on the go? Or are you a tea drinker? Or do you prefer um, just water? I'm not very good at drinking just water. So much prefer a hot hot drink. So what should we go for? Uh, let's go eeny meeny my mouth. There we go. We picked up a oval. So we'll pop the crystal, the oval. And another crystal, and what do we got? 
Mandy says, I've just been on the website and it felt like I was in heaven. Beautiful beads and jewellery and you have made beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, what a lovely comment. Thank you very much, Mandy. Christine says, coffee for sure. So, yes, coffee. Coffee keeps you going, doesn't it? I do enjoy like those frothy coffees you get out the boxes at the supermarket. That's my afternoon treat. And when I've finished my live, that's what, how I like to celebrate. I go and have a frothy coffee. And maybe even a biscuit if the boys haven't eaten all of them. And when I say boys, I mean my two boys are uh, 23 and 24. And then I also include my husband in that comment about boys because he's more likely to eat the biscuits than everyone else. But, uh, saves me eating them, I guess. Okay, so here we go. We've got our little stash, the three oval shapes and the two lentil shapes. And that didn't take too long to do. You can imagine just doing a whole tiger tail necklace. And, you know, it, let's have a little play while we're doing it. Got lots of ideas. Let's share. So you could have um, very basic if you didn't go down the tassel route because tassels are not your thing you could just have a very straightforward necklace say add a pearl you could add a dangle you could add another pearl and then the alternate which one you pop on you know and very quickly you could come up with an idea and just play and just carry on making these little components or you might just want the set of five at the front of the necklace and then have the little glass pearls for the rest of the way you could do the introduce the little crystals on the tiger line as well because obviously that'll go on there really easily for you um, and that would give you a quite a nice little uh, summery necklace i think um, you could also turn that into a little bracelet so you've got some like charm bracelet idea um, lots of things there, so you get two clasps in with each kit. So you could do yourself the necklace and the charm. Okay, so just a few ideas there. I'm sure you, you've got millions of ideas already buzzing around in your head. Let's put those to one side in a moment. Pop the tiger tail out the way. It's trying to come back. Okay, so what we want to do is create the the waterfall part um so we've got our jump rings okay we just put a collection out there's more of them in the kit than that and we are going to create our waterfall so if i bring back the other one so you can see i have uh, a bit of jump ring chain mail effectively here which would then be a two and two you've got two jump rings into two jump rings into two jump rings and it just gives a nice uh, spine for your waterfall on this occasion we've added the five elements which we will do today but you can easily see how you could build your tassel up to be really quite substantial just by using more elements so if you pop them there's plenty of space on these jump rings you could add more to it sort of like that just to give you an idea okay so we'll do the jump ring part now move her out of the way hopefully you're enjoying this so far it's uh, it's nice to bead with friends it really is and hopefully and as some of you have already said about uh, joining long as well it's nice okay so jump rings these are created on a mandrel uh, these ones will be by machine, um, but you can equally create your own if you've got lengths of wire. They're all done like a spring once it's created, and then they're cut through. So all jump rings do have a join. Okay, so if I just show you, when you open your jump ring, you want to go north to south. Okay. What you don't want to do is go east to west and pull it apart because it will disfigure the shape of the jump ring and you won't ever get it back um, into its original shape. So this jump ring is going to form the base part of our tassel. 
Okay, so I'm just popping that on the first jump ring. And at this point, I'm going to add another two jump rings to this one. That goes on there, that goes on there. Okay, so there we go. We've got the two jump rings added. My pliers are being a bit magnetic and holding on to the jump rings. Okay, probably because I've got a fluffy jumper on. I'm sure that's all it is. Right, two jump rings and our little oval. Okay, so let's just turn it around. Two jump rings and the first element. Okay, now take the pliers and join that jump ring back together. And with jump rings, just go together, slightly past and then back and it should maintain its nice round shape pop that down okay i'm going to add the second jump ring here and i said about two jump rings into two jump rings add the second jump ring to that first section the reason for adding those two jump rings there just saves you another another job in a minute um, if you don't or you don't want to work that way you can just add the two jump rings at a time with the element and then add further two jump rings and then sorry let's get back in the camera for you start again hold your two jump rings out the way for a moment okay now I want to pass this new jump ring, needs to pass through the two jump rings here and come back and come through this little element. So if I get them all lined up in the same place, and this jump ring is going to go through the two jump rings and through that element. And we're going to, again, north to south, cross and back again. Okay, now you can see, so we've got our oval element here, we've got the two jump rings attached to that, and then we've got the next two jump rings joining onto that. Okay, so we're going to carry on in this format. I'm going to open the jump ring, I'm going to pop on my lentil shape. I'm going to come through the two jump rings and let that hang down. Okay, so that's that's what it looks like at the moment. Let it hang down and get the other pliers in and get your jump ring back together. And a couple of wiggles. And then hold on to it while you pop it down. And this is how you build up the tassel. If you want a more fuller tassel, you can make yourself more of the dangly elements and you can add them on to every time you add jump rings. This one just spaces them out a little bit because you've got the two jump rings in the middle here that are not holding an element. So again, I'm passing through two jump rings and that element. Okay, let go of that first bit. Back in with the pliers and give your jump ring a little bit more. Okay. So at the moment, it looks like that. Okay. And you're probably thinking, well, which jump ring do I use for the next section? So this lentil, not lentil, this oval bead is the bottom of my tassel. Okay, so the next jump ring I need to be working with is this one I've just attached, or these two I've just attached to the lentil bead. So I'm just going to hold on there, hold on to those. If I show you with the pliers, I'll keep my fingers out of the way for you. Okay, and then you can already see that they will want to dangle down. And the jump rings I've just added become the top. So I'm going to place them down. Okay. I don't know how to decharge my tools. It's causing a little bit of issue today because they seem to want to stick to everything in the tool. 
Any suggestions? Very welcome. Open up your next jump ring. Okay, this pair of jump rings are going to be the empty ones again. So I'm going to pop that through, through there, through the two, and close it up. Okay. Put it back down again. And I'm, I'm just laying it down so you guys can see what we're doing because if I just keep holding it up in the air, it's very hard for you to see where I'm at. Open your next jump ring up, pop it through those two loops, but don't go through the one you've just added. Join that jump ring back together. Okay, so those two are now added. Right. So that's the topmost two, and they're not holding on to any elements. So the next element I'm going to add is going to be another oval bead. And again, we're going to use the two jump rings to add this one. So open your jump ring up again. I tend to pop the, the decorative part on before I attach it to the jump rings, just to have it. Probably because in the past I've got carried away opening and shutting the jump rings and forgetting to add that part on. So by doing it first, it doesn't get forgotten. Okay, wiggle them together. Lay it down so that jump ring stays up top. She says, and it didn't. Let's do that again. Okay. That's better. Next jump ring. Okay. Hold on to the last jump ring we just added. If I do that with the pliers. Try to keep my fingers out your way. Okay, and just work out what's what before you. Try putting your jump ring through. So it's going through the two jump rings and the decorative loop. And then again, off to south and back again. And that's our next two jump rings we've just added there. Okay, so now we've got tassels with three beads on. So next one in line will be this lentil bead. And next jump ring. Again, we're going to have two without any decorative parts to it. So they're quite quick to get put on once you get going. carry on doing this if we've got any questions please pop them in um oh uh heather saying already on my second cup of coffee mm -mm. very nice then i'm having my first cup of coffee the morning with you all good morning from seattle good morning Deb. thank you very much for joining enjoy that coffee it's just like a cup of tea the, the first one of the day always seems to be the best doesn't it Um, we've got uh, Heather. Additional buzzing is always welcome. <laughs> yeah, I get like that after about three cups of coffee. Um, most of my teas are, are the terribly types, so I don't think I get anything from them other than a nice flavour. Um, so we're just at the point of adding the, the decorative part to the next jump ring. Let's do that. I do like the fruity teas. That's uh, probably my favourite ones. So I like the strawberry, cranberry, those kind of flavours. Um, Heather says additional floss tassels would be a great filler with the drops. Mm, yes, good way of using drops. Mandy, you just mentioned that you had another site. Is that right? Oh, not sure. 
The mouse is hovering over something and hiding it. Let's have a look there. Um, just resorting beads and found you this afternoon. Just love beading and jewellery making. Thank you, David. That's very lovely. Thank you. Well, hopefully you can come and join us again and uh, do some beading along. And he says, I'm from Frinton on Sea, cold and wet. Oh. Oh, but you do get to see the sea. Now, Mulvin's a bit kind of landlocked. And I'm from South of the Hampshire originally. And I was about five minutes from the sea. And, well, maybe we didn't appreciate Well, I did appreciate it because we used to go for nice long walks quite often on the, on the beach front. And I really do miss the ability just to go and have a walk along the sea. It just seemed to recharge you somehow. Um, so I do miss that. Um, but the Mulvin is very pretty. Uh, I'm not much one for exercise, so going for a walk up the hill is quite, uh, quite a challenge. It's lovely when you get to the top and look down, and I don't mind the walk down. But uh, Yes, I really should get more exercise. I'd probably enjoy it a lot more then. Okay, so that's our fourth little element just added there. So again, we're now on to the two jump rings without anything attached to them. Um, if you wanted to make your your tassel really long and not necessarily full of decorative features, you could just add more and more jump rings and work your way into a nice long tassel. Um, you could equally just have a string of the crystals on the head pins um, and add some extra sparkle that way that would be really nice so we all like our sparkle there we go it's the second one of the undecorated jump rings and then we're on to the last part with the decorative piece and uh, Deb says it's beautiful I love the colours and water, ba water bodies are a wonderful calming for the soul mm, yes yeah they, they just any water lake like you say any water body lake ocean pond I've got a pond in the back garden um, it does feel good just to sit and watch the water. It's, uh, there's definitely something special about it. Okay, so this jump ring, here we go. We're just going to attach that there. And this is where you have to think about how you want to join your tassel to your necklace. So when we started out we popped the crystal ball which is going to be sort of the, the top of the tassel or the feature even of the necklace sorry i'll keep coming out get out the camera shot there let's try and keep in there for you so this is the last little of the two jump rings together there we go okay so if i hold those two last ones in the pliers Make sure my castle hangs nicely. Make sure that last element is actually on the two rings. So here we go. Here's our, our little tassel here. And you can see it, it just makes a nice feature. Obviously, you don't have to use the two by two jump ring idea. Um, but I just think it opens up the opportunity to make it look more stable that's not the word i don't know the word um it just looks more considered more elegant by having the two jump rings there it's more of a feature than it's just doing a job okay so that's our five elements like i say if you wanted it really long you could add seven nine i would always work in uh, uneven numbers on the tassel so that's our tassel this is our crystal bead that we're going to do the join these last two into. 
So we're just going to pick them back up. And two ways of doing it, you can either join it by un undoing your jump rings and going through here. Or as I'm having trouble with the magnetic part of this, I'm going to just find which way the loop opens. Open the loop on this part. Okay. You see that? So I've just pulled it. Again, north to south, don't don't pull it away from itself. You see how magnetic that is, it just goes straight to it. I bet it's this fluffy jumper I've got on. I'm trying to stay warm. They can't easily bead when you start shivering. We do have the heating on in the house, it's not that bad. Okay, so, okay, so I've just popped the two jump rings onto that loop and I'm now going to just pop that loop back together. Okay, if you've got a nice pair of, like if these are like a tweezer, tweezer grip tool, just make sure you don't want to join in this section here because these jump rings would then have an escape through. Okay. So that's the simple section there. We've got our crystal ball, we've got our little dangles. Okay, and then it's time for the actual neck plus piece itself, which is a tiger tail. Um, I tend to work from the design element, if you like, the, the focal piece, and I'll work both sides at the same time. That way you can have a play with the pattern as you go. And so we are going to have some of our little crystal beads. Uh, we've got our pearls. Going up. We've also got more of our slowest beads. Okay, I'll just put a few out. I'll save me tipping the whole lot everywhere. And now it's about playing with your design. If you like something to be uh, symmetrical, then you may well be thinking, okay, well, I'm going to put one of them. I might put crystal between each element. I have one of those. I'm going to pop a pearl in between, and then I'm going to repeat that pattern coming up the other side. And that would give you a nice symmetrical feel. You might like to be a little bit unsymmetrical and then think well okay well i quite like the fact that this tassel bead up the top here is this pinky oval i'm gonna kind of go for a pinky oval from this side i have my pearl again and the crystal then i might have two of those beads another oval here so then on this side i want it to look a bit different so Perhaps I'll have two of the lentil beads and then an oval and then you know, you've got plenty of paper to play for. Do a bit like that. So it depends on how you see it working. But obviously all the time you've just got tiger tail and you're not tying off the ends. You can keep playing with your design. Um, where you're going to have like the V of the necklace, ideally... You don't want to put two larger beads very close to this piece because you need a bit of an open space for that V to, to hang nicely. And so what you can do is pop in, so I've got the crystal there already. I'm going to pop a pearl. There's a hole there somewhere. There we go. And because we've got so many crystals, I'm going to add some sparkle all the way through this. So we have the crystal and the pearl. And let's go for the, the lentil bead. Sorry, the oval bead on that side. And then at that point, I would add another crystal. What do you think? Another pearl. 
and play with your design. This is all about playing. You're not wasting anything. Um, okay, maybe you're wasting a little bit of time if you get to the end and you hate it. But it's such a quick way of beading. You're not going to really waste much time. You can spend about 10 minutes playing with one idea. You'll get so far and you'll either love it or you'll think, well, it doesn't quite work for me. Perhaps I'll try something a bit different. Perhaps I'll have a few more pearls on before I start using the Solaris beads. And maybe you want a few more of these gorgeous little crystals in between, maybe sets of three. Again, I would work in uneven numbers. Uh, I don't know if you guys like even or uneven. But it's good fun to have a play. Um, so here we said about using a lentil bead. So let's move some of these out of the way. It's probably looking a bit confusing on the screen at the moment. So we can start seeing where we're going. Okay, so I'm quite liking that. I'm going to add another crystal to this side here. Uh, another pearl. Pearls make absolutely brilliant spaces, um, as well as in their own right as a bead. If you just wanted a whole line of beads, pearls on a necklace, which look gorgeous. They do work as spacers. Don't be afraid to use any type of bead as a spacer. Even those precious uh, gemstones when you buy them, they can all be enjoyed as a space for as much as anything. Okay, so it is just playing. Um, enjoy the beads, and have fun with it. Mix it up a bit. Pop in more crystals, less crystals. If you've brought some of the other kits recently with the bicones, beautiful addition to this kit. Pop in some bicones. Um, so although I'm going a bit random on the pattern itself, I'm still repeating the fact that they've got a spacers are uh, the crystals and the pearls between each of the main elements which are the Solaris beads. So it's not completely random. Um, and again, that's just about playing. You may have some different colour pearls that you want to alternate as well. That's another way of doing things. Uh, Deb says, beautiful, I love the colours. Thank you. Uh, looks great. Your head pins are much neater than the ones <laughs> uh, I wonder if that's Matthew commenting on that one. Or <laughs> there we go. Rhonda's paint, very pretty. Thank you, Rhonda. And uh, I love using the micro crystals. Yeah, they they're brilliant, aren't they? They for such a little little bead, they give a lot of impact. Okay, so that's a little bit on that side. So now I'm going to alternate back onto this side and put a few more beads in place and see how we, we feel about it. Um, so again, we've set, ended on a pearl this side. Um, pop another crystal. I do love these little crystals, that, that little flash of, I'll say pinks and purples. Occasionally you do get a bit of an orange flash and it could be because it's bouncing off the other colours we've got going on here. Um, but I think under this light, it is actually the colours are there on the crystals when they, they put a coating on them. They yeah, are beautiful. I think I might have to make myself a dangly pair of earrings with just those crystals as well. But I am tempted to make earrings with these crystal balls and pop them on the long line of uh, jump rings or chain. I've probably got some spare bits of chain that could cut into equal lengths and have some nice dangly little crystal ball earrings. That look rather pretty. Don't have any parties coming up, but I can wear them here. So it's a sparkle with the friends. It's always good. So what did we want to do here? Did we want to add another lentil bead? Yeah, I was kind of getting into a pattern. A slightly different pattern. That's okay. I'm saying when we get to the end, we'll decide if we like it or not. Um, so I was saying 
most of the necklaces I do tend to be about the 20 centimeters on each side so it gives the 40 in total which I think is about the 16 inch um, it seems to be quite a, a fun size people that enjoy that size it goes with most outfits um, but when I sell my necklaces I do tend to put an extender chain on there so it does give the option um, if you wanted to wear it with uh, a, a slightly heavier jumper or a blouse and you actually want it to hang around the collar it does give you a little bit of freedom to make that necklace longer but once you've made it a certain length obviously you can't wear it shorter so that that's the reasoning behind it here we go well, i haven't had a visit from my cat I, it disappeared he thought he didn't want to be on the telly so she's gone back to bed i think all the other cats have got their little spaces around the house i think jd is currently on our bed and brandy is curled up in the front room in her cat bar basket by the window surveying the outside world uh, sherry is generally out and about and she, although she's the mum cat she's, she's actually only probably about a year older than her son um, so she is full of life and a bouncy little thing she really is quite a sweetie she's come a lot a long way in the time we've had her she's got a lot braver um, what's quite sad is that she did have three kittens and two of them off two little girl tabby cats got rehomed together and then we had say the mum and the son um, but once she decided she'd done her bit of being a mum she just doesn't like him anymore it seems really mean you know, and they live in the same house but she just won't go she doesn't like it when he gets near her but then he is twice the size of her he's a proper ginger ginger boy and he has grown a lot so but say cats are good fun so how are we doing so are we are we liking what we've done so far let's pop it down so we've got a bit more of a b shape we're almost there so here we go i'll try and show you as much as we can so we've got our tassels we've got our crystal and then we've got the those bits out of the way and we've got our, our mixture of the solaris beads the pearls and the crystals so that's coming out quite nicely i think quite enjoying that pattern put it a bit more that way you can see a bit more of it then so i'm working up each side a little bit at a time so I'm deciding as I go along if if I'm liking the shape and I'm thinking about the shape of the beads and the, the combination of the colour. I want the nice separation of colours um, because it's quite, you know, it's not symmetrical, but you also want the feeling of weight of the colour and the textures is equal both sides of the necklace. Um, it would be very easy. You could just go for the oval beads at one side the lentil beads up the other side and that would look quite cool as well but i think visually it would look heavier on one side because of the shape and the colors um, but it'd be worth a play but these are all different things to consider and if you wanted to make a matching bracelet you could do the same design and this this would be enough for a bracelet just here you'd have your drawing going on here you could make the bracelet with the with the tassel idea as well um you probably want to buy two kits if you wanted to definitely have the two crystals or if the the crystal should be available separately as well so you might want to stock up on a few crystals just to give yourself some options and i think that element on its own the crystal and the dangly waterfall section that would actually make a nice earring as well so that could be quite good fun so, Deb says oh it's lovely the spring colors are gorgeous 
yeah it's that time of year we all we're all yearning for the bit more sunshine longer days a bit of warmth we go out for a nice walk and not worry about if we have to take our jumper or not so i shall carry on for a little bit here and i'm really quite liking it i think that's that's working really quite nicely and yes we do have a bit of a pattern going on it's okay it still feels a little bit random how are you doing have you all finished your drink i haven't even i'm gonna have a sip of my drink sit down with me because it is cold already hmm. yep definitely cold but, yeah we get used to cold drinks you get carried away beading you totally forget you made a drink so all i'm doing now is popping on sometimes these glass beads when they're coated um, and i think they're they're coated while they're on a strand the holes can get a bit of the coating down them um just like any other bead you just need to clear that that entrance hole for the bead and you can get your threading material down it okay so that's all good tv we will pretend we've carried on doing all the bead work i'm going to pop um, a crimp on these to finish off so what i'm going to do just to bring the, the bit that's going to be bound the back of the neck i want it to be narrower i don't want to end on one of the the bigger beads okay so just to continue with the pattern i would pop on the crystal pop on the pearl because we know the pearls are six mils so they're coming down in size pop on enough crystal okay and also if at this point if you wanted to gain an extra centimeter or two you could just continue this pattern of the pearl and the crystal and the pearl and the crystal to get the length that you desire you know it may, it may be that you want a 17 inch necklace continue the pattern on until you've got the length that you need and we are going to use a crimp bead you will have the uh, black crimp beads in your kit i didn't have any in my little patch so i've just picked up some copper ones but that's okay because i think it'd be nice and easy for you to see that okay so you pop your crimp bead on and generally i would put a seed bead at this point okay but we're going to use the crystal because that's what we're using today and it'll look lovely you're going to take the end of your thread pop it back down through that crystal and you see that just went through absolutely beautifully back through the crimp okay and then i'm just going to pull that gently through and i'm looking to get it's obviously our tiger tail is running all the way through here so i was actually completing this necklace i've got all this thread to play with i would keep my loop to about it's about five mil in length i might take it up a little bit more because all I'm looking to do with this particular loop is put a jump ring through it when I finished. Um, you may wish if you use a toggle clasp, you might want at this point to pop your toggle clasp on. Okay, so I'm looking at my little loop and I'm going to have a little bit smaller. There we go about that. So it's not much, you know, in in width as that's curled round. It's about the same size as the the crystal almost. And I would pop jump ring on there um you could do that now or be careful i'm just going to crimp this bead here okay if you had your toggle it would already be hanging on there so you use this the secondary part of the crimping tool and that makes your little crimp bead like a, a horseshoe shape u-shape 
use the first part of the crimping bead just turn your crimp 90 degrees okay and then you give that a squidge technical term there and then that forms this lovely little crimp shape it's nice and neat um, use the very front of your pliers where you've just got that little flat pad put it on the crimp a bit an extra little squeeze if you've got crimp covers now's a good time to pop them on um but that is really neat if we, if you don't have it it's not a problem it's, it's not going to do any any harm like that um you can pop on your jump ring again north to south on opening pop it over your toe your tail again give it a wiggle close okay and then with the rest of the tiger towel, if I say I was at the end of the necklace, I'd run it down just a couple of beads. Okay. You'd probably run it down through the pearl as well. Okay. And then I'd take the spare piece, make sure you're holding the spare bit. Get your wire cutters, come as close to that last bead, give it a pull and a trim. Okay. And then you just feed all your beads up along that tiger tail. Okay, and on, on the other end I would re repeat that process. Um, it might be that at this point I do the jump ring as well because I'm not 100 percent sure how I want to finish this necklace off, or I could pop on the clasp straight onto here and let's uh, find that clasp out so again i've got the crystal the pearl the crystal i'm going to add the crimp bead here we go and the crimp bead there Ooh, get marks on the paper here with my nail varnish not going to last very long this one Right, again, following the same pattern, just add the crystal. Okay, so we've got the crystal, the crimp bead, the crystal. If you're going to go directly through the lobster claw, you can do that. And once that's on, then you're coming back down through the crystal and that crimp bead and the pearl. And then hold on to your your lobster claw clasp and then pull this towel wire just gently okay and we want to get our loop to about the same size as the other side just to make it look tidy we want to make sure we don't have spare tiger tail showing in our necklace um, but we also want to make sure that we give our necklace a little bit of the ability to have some life so it's not so highly strong it won't bend nicely we want it to have a nice flex so we just curl the necklace so it allows for a bit of movement going on um, when I first done one of these I'd done it really rigid and tight and then it, the necklace just was not going to hang properly crimp and it goes in crimps you get the U shape into the second part with the, the first part which makes your u-shape round whichever way is easier for you to do it i've uh, the room that i generally do my beadwork in i have a uh, bead mat one of the fluffy bead mats and i've actually cut a little divot out of it and then i hold my beadwork above the divot and i can actually get my tools in that way and it also helps when i put the crimp covers on to put the crimp cover in that little divot and just looking to squish that little u shape and it folds that crimp neatly in half and again just take that very first section and give it a little squish okay and we've got a really nice neat little crimp there Okay, again, take your flush cutters, pull the tiger towel end towards you, cut as close to the bead. There we go. 
and that gives you a nice a nice finish if you've got the wire shields you could be putting them on if you use the the, the coiled wire french wire you could be using that as well so all extra options and it gives you your nice little tassels let's bring the other one back in and um, so you can see the difference so this one we've got the look little loop and it's just a turned loop you could do a wrap loop in there in between each one for your tassel to hang down this one just uses one of the sections of the toggle class but i happen to have spare um so that that works nicely for that one and i think i think that's just a really nice design i think certainly these colors loan themselves beautifully for spring and summer um with the blue one that was done for the the website picture that's definitely you've got a more of a holiday feel to it i have i'll say see what you think but i think the gray and the silver one on the website which we'll go to just shortly uh, is a real i think it's a, a good all year round if you like your metallic silver colors and your grays and you i think it would go beautifully the monochrome look um, definitely a good idea for that one so you know have a play have, make necklaces do the bracelet idea use these as earrings they don't have to be the whole whole necklace have a play with the layout of the beads you can see just with these two variances this kit if you did buy the two kits and you can play with the different color options and you can mix the shapes and colors quite nicely this one is using the two colors which is the kit today which is the pink champagne kit um, and that, that works up beautifully well as well so let's go and take a have a quick look at what any comments you might have lovely spring colors are gorgeous as deb um mandy it looks beautiful thank you very much that's a good idea cutting a little hole in your feet in your made a bead mat yes I've, I've i did it on purpose i have to say it wasn't an accident but it does work really really well it does save those little crimp beads when the covers pinging off all over the place um and it, it does help for lots of different purposes but that's the best one so on our website today if you not had a look already please do um i'll go for your little show now and we can see the blue version we hadn't had time to look at it already and so here we go so the blue version you've got the little wrap loop there you can see that and that would have been a loop here and again you've got the tassels again an uneven number just going for an extra length on an extra oval on that version and you've got a quite a a nice pattern going on with the neckline as well um, and so if you want to see on the website, if you just pop in on that picture and scroll on down, there we go. So this is the bundles today. So this is one I've been working with, the pink champagne. And as you can see, beautiful soft colours, definitely, definitely spring, summer. Um, and it contains the Solaris beads and the ovals and the lentils. And you've got the two mil faceted beads that's the ones i've been using today with a beautiful um, bronzy gold color but with the pinks and the purples popping out the six mil glass pearls and then the findings pack you'll get with the black plated findings okay we have the gorgeous blue lagoon set again i can imagine a lot of you got in for the blues just very very vibrant summary again uh the passion purple I love that magenta. That's a beautiful pinky colour to me. Real hot pink, isn't it? And then you've got the lovely glass purple beads and the pearls there. Again, the crystals, and you've got your crystal ball as well in each set. And the other one that I was saying about was the silver shadow, the greys, real metallic, monochrome look. Um, it's stunning, absolutely. If you carry on scrolling down, you've got all the other items that we think might you might enjoy alongside so if you wanted to change out the crystals and add a different color that's a little bit more to your taste uh, those are absolutely gorgeous to any any kit you have on the on the go all the pearls different colors and this teal colors absolutely gorgeous with the blue that mixture is lovely 
and as you scroll through you'll see more crystals more pearls and have a good look around um, there's lots of elements that you might just you know take this as an idea but take it make it your own by adding something a bit different to it so the project kits the bundles today are 12 pound 50 each and as we were saying if you buy all four it's a saving it's 20 percent off you get 40 pound you've got a huge amount of choice then to play with those colors and all the different varieties that you could come up with um i say two bundles certainly together would work really nicely um, but I would be tempted. I would buy all four. Um, I like to have the variety to hand. I like to be able to play with the colours and the selections. So, yeah, and um, hopefully you enjoyed all that. And you've got some good ideas of your own. You've got some, once those kits arrived in the post, you'll be all fired up and ready to create. And uh, it would be a really nice little summer project for you or spring project. And it will all be ready for when that sunshine does pop out. We've still got a bit of blue sky at the moment, a little bit of sun. Um, and let's see if we do actually get some snow. So, Guy, I think that's about everything. Um, thank you all very much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. It's lovely to know you're all out there and you're enjoying it. If you've got any ideas for future workshop and tutorials that you wish to see, let us know. And just got to some thank yous coming through you're very welcome it's, it's lovely to know that you're out there and, and you're getting something from it i hope you you're learning something you might not have seen before uh, maybe you you've had a go and it's not gone so well and you just need that little practice and some confidence to have another go but hopefully it helps and uh, the website i say absolutely brilliant for all the things that you could possibly need and just go with it have a practice have a play you can't go wrong the beads you don't throw the beads away if your necklace doesn't quite work out you just unstrang it start again you might have wasted a little bit of tiger tail thread maybe some cord maybe some findings but they're all things you can replace and they're not expensive um and you're going to come up with something beautiful to wear or gift as a someone friend family member birthdays christmas maybe it's a better easter present than a easter egg uh, and there's lots of friends that are on diets and things they certainly don't want me buying them chocolate as much as they like it okay so that's about everything a uh, great tutorial from heather thank you have a great day everybody absolutely everyone um Rhonda says thanks for the great tutorial joe you're very very welcome thank you for joining us uh, wouldn't be the same without you guys Mandy, with some of the other kits on the website, have you already done a video of you making them? Um, any of the kits and bundles that come under the live section, we will have done tutorials on. Um, if you go through the tutorials on the website, there are pages and pages of them. And I think most of them do have tutorials. If you come across something, you can't find a tutorial, let us know. We'll have a look for you. If we haven't done it, we will do. It gives us something to aim at. Harina says, thanks for a great tutorial. See you next week. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Thank you ever so much, everybody. If you've got any questions, pop them on. If you make something, take a photo, pop it on the Facebook page. It's really nice to see all your creations. I do get to look on there every now and then, see what you're up to. And also, don't forget, I remembered the banner this time. Like, subscribe, share. Let your beady friends know that it's out there the tutorials um there's always lots of people that are just starting off in their little life of learning to bead and doing something a bit different so it's uh yeah it's a good hobby it's a good craft it's good for you to chill out and think about beads for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour rather than cooking tea which is the next job oh there we go it's got to be done so thank you ever so much you have uh should be i think matthew on friday the 10th of march myself i'll be on next tuesday the 14th of march um another little number if i say frothy that's the only tip i'm going to give you for the next tuesday frothy mm, holiday kind of frothiness yeah little teaser i'm not showing you anything yet that's everything Take care, guys. Keep well. 
and we'll see you again very very soon.